All right, good morning, everyone. Today is July 1st, 2020. This is a special meeting of the members of the State Liquor Authority. Present today here in Albany is Chairman Bradley. Joining us by phone are Commissioner Ford. Commissioner Ford, can you just acknowledge that you're here, please? I acknowledge it. I can hear, and I'm here. Thank you very much. <laughs> and Commissioner Fan. Hi, Commissioner Fan is here. Thank you. Right. Also joining us today by phone is Council City Authority Meyerhoff. Yes, I'm here. Okay. The only item on today's calendar is item 787B. It's a request by Council's Office for an emergency summary order of suspension regarding Cheers Mate 2 Inc. So at this point, I'll turn it over to Council's Office. Um. Good morning, members. Thank you for uh, uh, getting on this morning to address this matter. Uh, the licensee at issue is Cheermate 2, Inc., doing business as Docs, D-O-X, uh, at 10 Broadway, Island Park, New York. This is a Nassau County o uh, OP license. The principals are Robert Hall and Nora Keller. Uh, this is a location that had been warned at least five times that its uh, business practice, which involved allowing patrons to purchase alcohol and congregate on its outside patio and deck area, were in violation of the guidelines on restrictions uh, in connection with the service of on-premise alcohol under the governor's executive orders 202.3, 0 0.38, and 0 0.43, all related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, the story here is a grave one, uh, and it goes back to the first warning in May, uh, May 16th of 2020, when Long Island was in phase one of the pause uh, reopening plans for New York State. At that time, um, the Nassau County Fire Marshal's Office, which is the entity that has been trying to get this location into compliance, uh, responded to complaints about overcrowding, noise, no social distancing, and alcohol consumption on the outdoor, outside patio, the deck, the docks, there's a parking lot there. Uh, the fire marshal visited on May 17th, spoke to Ms. Keller, the licensee's principal, and gave her a verbal warning about conforming her conduct, the conduct of this licensee, to Executive Order 202.3. Uh, no summons issued at that time. Um, the next uh, piece of evidence we have from the Nassau County Fire Marshal is that approximately a month later, in, uh, on June 13th, when Nassau County had entered Phase 2, which allows outside service, uh, but subject to strict guidelines about social distancing, seating at tables, et cetera, uh, that's Executive Order 202.38, uh, Fire Marshal responded to complaints and observed 100 to 150 patrons standing and congregating on the outside patio and deck consuming. Uh, this is what we've seen in many circumstances, an outdoor bar essentially, uh, it is not in compliance with 202.38, which requires uh, consumption of food and alcohol only while seated uh, in socially distanced tables outside. Uh, that is not what was happening here. Uh, Ms. Keller was again given a verbal warning by the fire marshal's office. Uh, a few days later, June 17th, I guess that's the next weekend, actually, next Friday, fire marshal responds again. Uh, to complain, same kind of complaints, large crowds. Uh, again, the licensee is warned, uh, no summons issued. Um, the next day, the marshal uh, returned based on more complaints. These involved under overcrowding, underage drinking, noise, uh, and they, you know, when the marshal arrived, um, the reports that state that they were standing shoulder to shoulder and congregating on the patio and deck. Uh, security guard had no idea how many people were outside uh, on the patio. Uh, this is a location where the patio is uh, uh, licensed with a maximum occupancy of 42. 
and there are hundreds of people out there. The following weekend, which was last weekend, uh, complaints on Friday, uh, that prompted the SLA to do a joint operation with Captain Manella from the Fire Marshal's Office in Nassau County on Saturday, June 27th. Uh, that report, the results of that inspection were, were findings of at least 200, 235 patrons, most of them not wearing masks or social distancing, on the back patio. Uh, the Fire Marshal issued 21 violation orders, criminal court summonses, and there were at least 15 SLA violations identified. Um, respectfully, no one living in New York today could look at the scene that's taking place at this location and not know that this is unlawful activity and puts the public health at grave risk and is a violation of public health and safety. Uh, but this licensee was told on multiple occasions, perhaps not sternly enough, maybe if there had been um, uh, more significant uh, warrants or, or summonses issued earlier, it wouldn't have gotten to this extent, but there is no doubt that this licensee did not care about the warnings and just ignored them. And the problem got worse and worse. There's no question that there are violations here of Executive Order 202.3. Uh, this is not a takeout operation. And to the extent that there's some claim that it is, it wasn't. Uh, it's a violation of 202.38. Uh, this is not the permitted kind of outdoor service that the governor's uh, executive order and the restrictions from the Department of Health and the State Liquor Authority contemplated, because it doesn't involve social distancing. Um, under uh, Executive Order 202.38, the State Liquor Authority has a process. Uh, licensees can apply to expand their license premise uh, by sending us a diagram and explaining how they're expand expanding. That was not done here. The license premises here is just the patio, 42 uh, person maximum. Hundreds of people are out there drinking. Uh, there's a notice of pleading that's already been issued. It has 42 counts in it. In addition to the multiple violations of the executive orders, uh, the inspection uh, this past weekend found 20 fire code violations and and 16 other SLA violations, including unauthorized alterations, uh, non bona fide uh, based on nightclub activities with no food, failure to comply with local laws in the, a number of respects, including an illegal gas line, stove hood, et cetera. Um, this is a licensee that is operating outside the law continuously and in a way that puts us all at risk, uh, given the seriousness of the pandemic and the need to adhere to social distancing requirements. Uh, based on that, uh, we believe that the, uh, the members can have no confidence that this licensee will follow the law, put the public at imminent risk of uh, 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 danger to its public to, to health and safety, and uh, we believe a summary suspension should be uh, ordered in this case. Commissioner Fan, any questions? No, I don't have any questions. Commissioner Ford. So, Council, you're saying that they did have uh, some permission on their uh, MO to have a outside uh, serving, but not to the extent that that they were caught doing. Did I understand that correctly? Well, yes, they have the they have they are permitted to serve under normal circumstances in that space. Prior to okay. the outside service permission, uh, which began in phase two, they were violating the governor's restrictions, which didn't permit any on-premise on service. And, and the fire marshal went out there and said, you are breaking the law. Um, so after phase two started, while they were permitted to, to have service outside, that service was supposed to be socially distanced, seated service, not a multi-hundred people shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder bar scene. And um, limited to 42. Well, that's the certificate of occupancy uh, right. limitation. Uh, so I think it's like uh, 20 seats on the diagram at tables and 12 bar seats. Um, yeah. There are also pictures that we've provided, uh, that I, I, at least one picture we provided a color copy. I believe that tells the story. It gives you some insight as to what was going on, on the back, in, in the back there at this location. Okay, thank you. 
Chairman Bradley, any questions? How did we find out about this bar? Was this was this one of the ones we found um, in the task force patrols that we've been doing, or did we hear about this from the from the municipality? I believe it's a combination of both. I believe the reason we first went out to Island Park was based on complaints that take that that came into us through the task force, um, and that that is what prompted. Uh, uh, a joint operation in Island Park where the SLA asked the the, um, the fire marshal to join in an inspection this past weekend. I do not believe that we got direct referrals uh, from Nassau County uh, so of was, these earlier, that, earlier that, complaints. Yeah, that was my next question. So the fire marshal visited this place at a minimum of five times in a month time and wrote no summonses for the same behavior and arguably worse behavior on some of those occasions and never contacted us that this was going on. As far as I know, that that that, that is true. It's possible there was a referral, um, but uh, I do not have information on there being a referral. And I do know that what prompted this was activity in the Island Park area generally. There are some other locations in that area that we also investigated. So um, I, I think it's obvious to me that this locality is doing or, or not taking their responsibilities in enforcing the governor's executive orders seriously, given the fact that they, they feel it's necessary to give out five warnings before they actually do anything. And they only did anything because we actually contacted them. Is that fair to say? Uh, based on what I, based on the record I have, that is, I, I do not know why uh, summonses were not issued for violations in May or earlier in June, uh, or during, you know, or two weeks ago um, when uh, essentially the same conduct that we saw this past weekend uh, was apparently taking place. Okay, thanks. All right, then, Commissioner Fan, your vote. Yes, um, it's very disturbing that this license was really just issued on April 9, 2020. Is that right? Um, the they may have been out there on a. They may have been out there on a temp, a temporary before that. But yes, I believe the license was issued in April. Got it. I understand. Okay. Well. Um, really wish that these licensees had the foresight to really, you know, not operate this way given the pandemic. It's really unfortunate and unforgivable that they ignored multiple warnings, at least five of them, from local fire marshal and law enforcement in violation of the governor's executive orders. They were offered many opportunities to correct their actions, but when at the last time when they were shut down, they had 225 people with a 42 people capacity, as Council just mentioned. That's five times the number of bodies, which is bad on the, which is already bad on a normal day and really bad in the COVID situation. They were making a profit at the expense of public health officials and also put drain on valuable law enforcement resources. And so for their imminent threat to public health, safety and welfare, I vote to summarily suspend this license. Commissioner Ford. Uh, I, I, I wonder why we weren't notified about it earlier. But uh, aside from that, um, I do think that the local authorities were being ex extremely patient with them. Uh, May 17th, no, su uh, no summons issued a visit on June 13th, uh, despite there being 100 to 150 patrons, no summons uh, issued. Uh, June 19th, again, uh, six days later, no summons issued. Uh, June 20th, uh, the next night they came back, they did issue a written warning. June 26th, they issued a writ written warning. And by that time, the next night, June 27th, we had a full bore inspection with uh, SLA investigators, uh, at which time uh, several other violations were issued, kind of opened up the door there on them. So I kind of feel like they really brought this upon themselves by 
violating the executive order and just simply not paying attention or even acting like they care. They were just blatantly disregarding every warning given to them. So uh, for those reasons, I, I vote to summarily suspend as well. Chairman Bradley. Patience is a, I don't know, a good adjective for what the government did here. I don't know what is going on in Island Park, but I would hope that they take enforcement of these executive orders much more seriously going forward because it's obvious to me they did not hear. If they need to visit a place five times that is a problem to this extent, then they're not taking the responsibility seriously. And they're going to lead us down a very bad road. This was in my view, an intentional violations of very clear executive orders that put the public and welfare at, put the safety of the public at risk, and not just the welfare of the customers at this location, but all of the local residents and more um, by their activity. I think the, you know, as council said, there are pictures. These pictures provide a clear indication of what exactly was going on here, and there can be absolutely no confusion that none of this was legal. Um, so I vote to summarily suspend, and I would recommend that they not open again, at least during the course of this, no matter what the, no matter where this goes. I would think that during the course of this pandemic that this place should not be open. All right, I have no other items, Chairman. Do you have anything else? No. All right, then. Uh, thank you all for joining us, and this meeting is adjourned. Thank you, Tom.